Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Fearless Influencer Podcast. And uh, this is another episode where I, I tend to get very excited about the people I'm interviewing lately because these are the movers and shakers. These are people that are out there doing things. And I see what they're doing and I like what they're doing. And it just prompts me to want to have a chat with them and find out what they're doing because when people are out there making it happen, those are the ones you want to learn from. And so today I've got a good friend and a marketer out there who I've known for a while, Stacy Hall. What's happening, Stacy? Good to have you. Well, Mark, I'm I'm just thrilled. I'm beaming because I love your interviews. I'm very honored that you chose to interview me. And uh, I wouldn't be doing videos at all if it wasn't for your training, your mentorship, and your example. So this is just going to be fun for me. Oh, good. Well, and we're all about having fun here. That's for sure. And talking marketing, that's what we love. We love it. We love it. So, Stacy, I've known you, I think we met for the first time right before the pandemic. It was in 2019, late I know exactly. So we've known each other several years now. Um, but for those of people that may not know you, maybe take a few minutes and just share your story a little bit. How you got kind of involved in online marketing, course creation, things like that. Well, my story starts like this. It was time for me to stop going to breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, dinner meetings. This is before we knew COVID was coming. Um, and because that's how I built my business. And I was exhausted going out constantly, meeting, getting the cards and coming back, then arranging the, you know, the one-to-ones. And so I said, well, social media seems to be the way the world is going. I'll just start watching what other experts are doing on Facebook. There was no TikTok back then. Instagram hadn't started yet. And I had been on LinkedIn, but it was very dry. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to Facebook and see. How, well, you know, I don't dance, but I think I can jump on. I wound up in Facebook jail six times in five months. Like, but I'm doing what they're doing. I, what, you know, what? who do you have to pay at Facebook to get them to let you do your stuff? So I was, I literally was crying. <laughs> and I hate to say it, it takes a lot to make me cry. But I was so frustrated. I was crying to a friend. And so she said, I don't know how to help you, but I know a few people who could. And she connected me to folks who knew you. And I happened to be able to watch a webinar that you gave. And it was, so I'm just going to tell everybody out here, I was fanning on Mark. For a long time before I met him, and any time he gave a webinar, I was there because he speaks in a way that I can understand. So little by little, I started to play with doing Facebook Lives way back when, and then short form videos, and more and more building my audience through videos. And I'm not going to say it's the only way I do it, but I do. The, the only reason I do as much as I do is because of Mark. Where we met was actually at a marketing retreat where I couldn't believe that he was actually there. So yeah, that's, I know it's like, my God, Mark Harbert is here. And um, the rest is history because at that weekend retreat is when I, I found my, my, we'll say my legacy program, which is called Go For Yes and teaching people to stop going for the no when they're in sales and really found my footing. And then from there, my book, Selling from Your Comfort Zone. And, mm -hmm. and it's, that's what I'm known for now is how to stay in your comfort zone and expand it to make more sales, enjoy more satisfaction, achieve more success. Yeah, I love that. There's two things you shared I really wanted to highlight here because you, you so you, you, were, a, you were out there, you know, make, working hard, going to doing a lot of physical networking, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but when that's the only way that you're building your business and you're not accessing online, I think the pandemic changed that for everybody. Oh yeah. So many oh, people yeah. came online at that time and kind of realized how important it was. But the second part of what you said was you went to a retreat and that's where things changed for you. And I talk about that for a second because we're in online marketing. It can get very lonely in online marketing. You're sitting in your office. I'm here in my, my man cave slash basement, which is kind of my man cave office where I do all my work. It gets lonely. And I think people don't realize how important it is to go to live events, masterminds, shake hands, hug, 
hang out, have a meal together, whatever. Talk about that. Well, I'm going to say that the reason I chose to pay for it was that I knew it wasn't going to get done in my home environment. And in fact, I'm getting ready to do a whole series of videos. And again, I'm going to go somewhere this time, not to retreat, but I, I feel like I know what to do and I just need to get out of my home environment and out of my habit of checking my Facebook messages, checking my LinkedIn messages, checking my emails, you know, like go somewhere and shift. So that was the first thing. But in this particular case, because I was going to work on a full program, being able to be where there were going to be multiple in different parts of putting a program together, to me, that was full immersion. And in it was, I think, five days total. And I learned from here, I learned from here, and I learned from there. And then there were, I think there were 12 others who were in the position that I was. And hearing the advice that they were given opened me up to ideas that I would never even thought to ask about. So I, it, it fast forward in my career, I would say five years, just those five days fast forwarded me five years. See, and that's something I learned, you know, many years ago when I first started in network marketing was, uh, going to events will fast track you ahead easily, depending on the impact it has on you six months to a year. I mean, if you want the fast track, you need to be getting out and going to events. They're some of the most impactful. Honestly, during the pandemic, I, I hated it because I was so used to seeing people and hugging people and hanging out, going to like six, seven, eight events a year. And then all of a sudden, nothing. You yeah. know? So I, I just wanted to highlight that because I think that's a very important thing. And that's where you've had a lot of breakthrough for you. So well, I did. And, and it was and the funny part was the. I could never have imagined what would have happened. I, I couldn't have. But I was having a conversation with one of the experts, and I said something that I had said all the time. To me, it was like as plain as the nose on my face, which is why I wasn't talking about it with other people. It's like everybody knows that. And it was the phrase, I go for the yes. We were having a conversation with, I go for the yes. And he said, is that the name of your program? I said, no, I've been trying to figure out the name of my program. And, you know, like trying to come up with cutesy. Why wouldn't you name your program that? Yeah. And like, because everybody knows. He's like, no, nobody knows that. Everybody knows go for no. And and from there, you like that little piece and everything else fit together. You know? So, but yeah, I could never have expected that my throwaway line would become the thing. You never know. And that's why getting to getting around other people through, you know, you, you just don't realize that those little nuggets that somebody can put on you and uh, give that to you. So, all right, so let's shift gears here. We know your story. Let's talk marketing. Okay. Take us through the typical day of Stacy Hall. Like, what do you do to generate leads, convert leads? What's, what's kind of your, okay. Your story. All right, I'm going to keep it really, really simple. And I'm going to tie to, I'm going to tie something everybody knows about them to something that I'm teaching and they go together like this. So I believe everybody in marketing by now, especially if you're following Mark, you know about know, like, and trust. People have to know you. They have to like you. They have to trust you before you can make an offer. That means building your audience, engaging with your audience and making offers to your audience. So I do that all day long, every day in various ways. But I couldn't do that until I had identified how to know what to do, which is what I teach in Selling from Your Comfort Zone, which is, am I in alignment with who I want to be in the world? It starts there. And, and so I did that work before, but now every day I'm checking in. It's like, am I showing up the way I want to personally show up to myself and to other people? Okay. Am I in alignment with what I'm selling? Just because I could sell it. And I have a lot of different things that I could make offers to. Or, yeah, two people, for. Am I really loving that? And if so, why? Why? Not, not what is my big why. Why am I loving this product, this service that I have? And what is the reason I'd want to tell people about it? And Mark, that may seem so like a duh, but I'm going to come back to it in a minute why it's not a duh, believe it or not. And then 
my audience. Okay, so I have one audience. I have lots of ways I can serve the audience, but I'm making sure that when I'm communicating, I know and have in my mind a picture of my ideal audience as opposed to, well, this subset or that over there, or for this, I'm just going to talk to these. Like, no, if I'm making an offer, if I'm getting ready to provide content that will ultimately make an offer, it has to be on point for my ideal audience. And then the content. Have I sat down and thought about what are the problems this ideal audience is having? And what do I want to say about that? And am I going to make it a long, drawn-out explanation? Am I going to just give them a short, quick tip today? What are all the different ways I'm going to have available to me? And so that gets planned out a month in advance. Actually, it's actually planned out for my entire year because there are four principles I stand on, and I just keep repeating those every quarter, right? So the duh, that's the part that is not the duh, is loving what I'm selling, being in alignment with it. And the reason I say that is because most people, when I say, how are you in alignment with your product? I'll get this. I don't understand what you mean. Okay, let me say it another way. Why do you love that product and why do you want people to use it or, or have it? Because it makes a difference. Yeah. In what way does it make a difference? Like, and when we start drilling down, very few people have a true connection to what they're selling. So for me, that is a tip of God. As I'm going through the building age cell, I'm making sure my other four parts of alignment are in place. Yeah. And then I get into action. Yeah, that's awesome. I absolutely like so many people are out there promoting programs strictly because they think they can make some money from it, even though the product is not like... You know, uh, and I figured that out very early on where I was getting into programs. I'm like, you know, I don't really, I don't, is this really going to help people? I don't think so. And I'm not going to promote it. So early on, I started really shoving programs aside that I did not feel were going to help people and that I did not feel good promoting. So it's very important to get in alignment with that because it's your integrity, really, ultimately. No, integrity is a huge deal. It's a huge deal to me. You know, I um, I take it very seriously when I promote something. I don't just promote anybody. Um, and so for me, it's a it's a big deal, and you, you you have to make sure of that. So I love that. And are you primarily like connecting with people like through your email list or a Facebook group or social media? Like, what's kind of your main go to? I guess. Well, let's, where do I start? When I'm building an audience, I'm going to primarily Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. These are my three okay. places. And I have a way of looking for, now I, I talk about being the lighthouse. What do I stand on? What do I stand for? But that said, I put myself in places where my ideal audience is likely to show up, right? So when I say I'm looking, I'm looking at a profile. I'm not looking for people. I know they're going to be here somewhere. Okay. I'm in the right spot. And now when they start showing up, their posts show up, their communication shows up. Now I'm looking at, do they match my audience profile? I'm not even thinking, would they like me? Right. And I think that's a big difference between me and some, I'm going to say me in the beginning, me. Yeah. Let's put it that way. When I was beginning, it was like, but they even want to hear what I have to say. I don't even think about that anymore. Yeah. Now I'm like, all right, let's see how this person's showing up in the world. Do I want them to be in my world? That's what I'm, I'm looking at. And so that's where engagement starts. I'll engage on their posts. I'll engage with their reels. I'll send messages to let them know I appreciated what they posted. If they don't respond, see, I'm a non-follow-up girl. Like, I, I know that there's a lot of people get mad at me for saying that. But for me, I don't find the money's in the follow-up. I find the money is in the original connection. And if there is one, if they're responding back to me, if they're liking what I'm putting out there, then what do I need to follow up? We just keep staying in conversation. We keep a conversation alive. So I'm a conversation girl. 
not a follow-up girl. I that, I love your take on that. I mean, I honestly do. I think it's a great way to look at it because the truth is, like, I've been at this so long, I can smell it a mile away. When somebody's trying to connect me, it's inauthentic. I can smell it. I can read it in the text. You know it. You feel it. It's in your bones. You get it. There is something about genuinely connecting first, letting it develop, and then when the time is right, you've got something. And I think that that, that uh, I love that, that take. If they're putting stuff out, then engage with it. Talk about it. Have the conversation about that. It will keep going if they believe you're trying, as opposed to, yeah, Stacy, how's it going? Yeah, why don't you just what's the next sentence? Just tell me the next sentence so I can tell you no. Okay, let's let's get this over with. Or maybe I'll just block you right now, right? So that's that's where it goes. And then if they like something that I've put out in terms of content, sometimes I'll say click here and get it. But most of the time I'll say if you want more tips like these, let me know. So they let me know and I give them something that they can get on my email list for. Oftentimes it's a group. They can go to my group, I get their email, and then I put it in manually. And and now we're able to stay in communication together. And then, yes, they will get emails from me. And yes, they will get daily tips from me. And if when I go through my friends list, I can pretty much tell you that the last time I talked to each person was not that long ago. So does that take effort? It does take some effort. Do I automate some of what I do? I'm going to tell the truth. I automate my birthday greetings. I do. Because I was finding, Mark, that I was not keeping up with them. And to me, somebody's birthday is really important. Oh. So I've got a, um, a tool that lets me make sure I'm acknowledging somebody's birthday. But when they respond back, I'm now in conversation with them personally. See, I love that too, because there are certain things like that I automate. When I have new members sign up into my program, after two weeks, they get a text from me saying, hey, I'm just checking in with you. I wanted to know, how's it going? Yeah. And I get texts back all the time, but that first initial text was an automated text. And then I can reply back and same things. I think when you've, when you've been connecting with people on a real level for a little period of, for a period of time and not just contrived, you start to learn where you can automate stuff and where you can't. Yes. I love automation. But I also know that I don't want automation to look so much like automation, you know? It's like I said, the birthday degree, I write them, yeah. right? I, I write an assortment. Facebook then chooses, like, it's on their automation schedule. Um, I, I wait for someone to respond. Then I'll send them myself a GIF, a birthday GIF with a personal message, and I'll ask how they're doing. And so it always feels like it's me. It, what I can't stare, and I get this on LinkedIn really more now than I even on Facebook, is the folks who have in mail, like they're paying for it, and somehow they're automating that as well. And the the canned response, the canned message going out, and they're they're not even seeing that they've sent me a message previously. Like, and this happened this morning. I, I get a connection request. Yeah. Hey, we should connect. Okay, well, let me go in. Sure enough, there's a message from two years ago where I said, I'm waiting, you know, why would you like to connect? And I never got an answer. Why would I connect now? Right. And so, I'm, I'm, you know me, I get on my soapbox about this stuff because it's, it's, I, just be a human, people. Just be human. Yeah, that's really that's really what it comes down to. And I think that's why I love what you're saying because social media, you 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 hit it on the on the the key. If people are putting out posts, they're thinking through things, they're sharing things. Uh, how powerful it is to leave a short, insightful. I love this. I appreciate this. That is such a great idea. Whatever, whatever it is, a genuine comment can go so far because it goes back to that little phrase we've all heard. They don't care how much you know until they know That's how much. That's right. You know. That little emotion, that little injection of emotion that people feel when they when they go, oh, I felt so good because they told me they remember you. Ew. So much different. And Mark, after all these years of people training correctly 
on social media marketing. It is amazing to me how few people still put that training into place. Um, and cause there are, there are many you and, and others that you and I both know we're, we're not telling something different. We've been talking about this. A little heart isn't the same. An emoji, anybody can click the heart, right? They're, click pre, the heart. they're pre done for you half the time. Like when you click on the comment on the app, like on the, on the Apple phone, I, they have little, you just have to click on it automatically. Oh yeah. Yeah, say my I've got a I've got a pixel. Yes, exactly. So we know that that took no effort. Yeah. But like you said, how hard is it to leave? I really enjoyed this. You've got me thinking. I look forward to seeing more like this. How hard is it? Yeah. Like have them already in your head. And then once you start typing, our phones will automatically write the words already there. It doesn't even just just choose the next word from our. AI on our phone. Yeah. So once you, you know, kind of do that, which I love that, put yourself in a position to see the people that are your ideal client, you, you're commenting, engaging. And because I know this is the way people think, when do you start bringing up business? When it feels right? When you just, you listen oh. to that internal, like, you know, you don't try to force it. What, what's your kind of. Yeah. I, well, you know, people say that it's like when it feels right, how do you know when it feels right? So I, I want to give a detailed answer to yeah. this, not just, not just a canned answer. I think that cool. it, it is going to be different, obviously for each person, because I know who I want because they have certain needs and problems because I put myself in places where they're hanging out. It's relatively easy for me after I've told them that I really enjoyed their content. I have a, I, I ask two questions. How's everything in your world? Is everyone okay? Now that may not sound businessy, but I know that either they're going to say to me, I'm blanket stay, everything's fine. And I'm going to write back and say, I'm so glad it is. Tell me what's going good in your life. Tell me what's going good in your business. Or they're going to tell me there's a problem. And I'm going to ask them to tell me more about that. And then I'm going to offer. So for somebody who's having a problem, I'll say, I can appreciate what you're going through. I've been through that. Or I've known people who've gone through because I won't ever lie and say that I did something that I haven't. But I'll say, I think I've got a couple of tips I'd be happy to share with you. Would you like to have a private chat? And I'll share it with you that way. No charge. Because if I'm getting on a call and I'm building relationship, that's what's important to me. Now, sometimes in that conversation, oftentimes, after I've given a couple of free tips, and I'm not talking about being on a call for an hour. I don't do free coaching. I give a tip or two. Yeah. I will say, there's others I can share with you. Would you like to know how I do that? That's great. Or if it's a product that I'm offering, there's something else that I do. It requires a purchase. Would you like to know where I buy it? Hmm. And I'll tell you why I'm using those words in a minute. They'll generally say yes, because I've just given them something that was of interest to them and of value. Now, if they say no to me, they might say, no, I'm good for now. Not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah. It's okay. You wanted the tips. I gave you the tips because a lot of people will take in free information, but do nothing with it anyway. Okay, fine. It was my opportunity to kick the tires to see if they're perfect for me. Yeah. Not the other way around. See, that's again. The flip. Yep. Yeah, I'm not doing an hour coaching because I'm not trying to prove myself to them. I'm trying to see my job. Are you good for me? Right. And if that seems selfish, good, because I'm a business owner and I have to make money at my business. Otherwise, I don't have a business. But if they say yes, then great. I'll say this is where I bought it the first time. So if I'm selling it, and but it, I didn't create it, People have no problem buying things. They don't necessarily want to sell. So if I say, here's my website, you can buy it from there. Even that conveys, well, once you buy it, you're going to have to have your own website. But if I say, well, this is where I bought it the first time. Okay. Yes, you can see it's mine. 
but I'm not telling them I'm expecting them to sell it. And it does seem to take the issue off the table, just us for me. And then they can say, but what if I want to sell it? Well, if you want to sell it, then this is how you would get started. But I didn't bring it up. All I said is, here's where you buy it. Yeah. If it's my own, then I will say, here's how you can get started with me. Yeah. Here's how you get started with me. And it, it just, it's human language. It's common language. I'm not using marketing speak. Yeah. And I, what I love too, is you're also demonstrating with what you just said that probably over time, you've just gotten so much better at listening to people and keying off words and just understanding the energy of the person also. And you only get that by talking to people. You only get that by going back and forth. And, you know, a lot of times when people, you know, they pitch when the time is not to pitch, it's just a lot of times an experience. But I've learned over the years too that, you know, how to really read the energy of a person. I can read it in a message, you know, sent on Facebook. Once you do it so much, you kind of learn the energy and you can feel it. Right. So for people who are saying, have you have calls with everybody? No, of course not. I'm having messages with everybody. And as Mark just said, I'm listening for whether they look like they're a match for me, not the other way around. And um, that question, I I understand what you're dealing with. Oh, I didn't come back. So let's say their business is great. I'll come to that in a minute. But finishing somebody who's having a challenge, if I say to them, I can probably give you a couple of tips privately, no charge. Would you like to play on the time for that? If they say yes right away, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a very productive conversation. Yeah. If they say, well, let me think about it, have at it. Let's yeah. say I said, I am not a follow-up girl. I am not going to check back and go, did you think about it? Like, because <laughs> if they did, they would have let me know, right? I'm going to move on to someone else. But if somebody says to me, all's well in my world i'll say great what's going well for you i know and see i've already know i've already been to their page i already know what they do i already know they're communicating otherwise i wouldn't be having a message with them and say so tell me what's going on in your business that's so good what's coming up well i think too you know um what's interesting is you know being a business owner one of the things i know about myself is I'm a quick decision maker. Like I've really worked hard to be a quick decision maker. And I like to work with other quick decision makers that they see an opportunity. It's right. It fits and they move. And, you know, perfect example. I literally just hired a coach last week to help me with nutrition, fitness, things like that. Got on the phone, 15 minutes. I was off paying him 10 minutes later. You know what I mean? It was like, it just first time came from a recommendation from somebody. I'm like, I'm in, I'm done. Let's move. Like no reads. I told my wife, I'm like, honey, this works. It's great. She's like, cool. I'm in, I'm going to do it with you. You know? And the thing is, is like the people, and I, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but the people that, you know, are, let me think about it. Let me stew about it. Let me research it. Let me this cool. Go do that. I'm not saying don't do that. But that's not the kind of people I'm really hardcore looking for. Like the people that can make really quick decisions. Those are the people I know that I'm really searching for. So as a business owner, it is very important that we begin to recognize the right prospect from the wrong one. Because now it doesn't mean the wrong prospect might not be the right prospect two years from now. You know, you see what I mean? But right now they may just not be right for you. And that's happened many times. Somebody's followed me because that's the other thing. I don't, I don't just say I'm out of here. If they don't want to have a call, I'll say I do have a group where I offer tips. Would you like to have access to the group? And you generally they'll say yes because that's, you know, they don't want to say no twice. So they'll say yes. But I have many folks who, even from a birthday message, because I never pitched on the birthday at the but I'll send a birthday message. They'll say, thank you. You've always been so thoughtful. I'm curious. I think I'm ready now to do something with you. Can we have a conversation? That has definitely happened yeah. to me. Absolutely. It's just all about nurture. Just get out there, keep yourself in front and center and you know, people will find you. So, all right, last question. And then we're going to, we're going to wrap this up, but 
So I like to ask this question because I, I, when I interview people, cause I think it's good and it really kind of, uh, helps people cast a vision, but where do you see yourself five years from now, 10 years from now? Do- well, I know exactly. I just tell this conversation with somebody They said, cause I'm, I'm a partner in a, in an organization and I'm the, I'm just become the editorial director for the magazine for the organization. Um, along with some other things, because I love to write and I love to help people's messaging get out there. So it's a perfect match for me. But what I said was five years from now, I'm not going to be doing this full time. I will be receiving residual income only from whatever partnerships I have put together. Travel, of course, but I think Bill and I are going to be settled in uh, one of the two countries that we're thinking of and just kind of in Chilling, just chilling. I, I, there are lots of ways that I want to make a difference in the world. I know you're, you're a spiritual man. I'm do my best to be a spiritual woman, and I'd like to have more time to devote to that. So five years from now, that's where I'll be. And these are my five years to complete fulfilling all my financial goals for my business. I love it. Well, um, so Stacy. We've got some resources people can check out, some cool resources, training resources. Your your book is awesome. Uh, and we're going to put that, if you're looking at this on my blog, look in the, in, on this, this page right here. You'll see them. If you're listening on the podcast, check the uh, description. You'll see those resources there. And then also, Stacey, where can they connect with you? Maybe. Well, my website is the easiest because all you have to do is remember my name, Stacy S T A C E Y A N N Hall H A L L Stacy dot com. All my social links are there. If you go under courses, you're going to see my free courses that you can download and enjoy. Um, the book information is there: Audible, Kindle, paperback, everywhere books are sold. And I think there's testimonials and maybe some snippets from the book there too. So StacyAnnHall.com is all things Stacy Hall. Awesome, I love it. Guys, reach out to her, say hello, let her know you heard her here. And um, Stacy, thanks for coming out. You're always uh, fun to talk to and uh, great insights for sure. Mark, I'm truly still still one of your biggest fans. I I will I mean I I buy for number one, but I'm saying that I have I I'm always like I said I have a library of Mark's emails. I'm just gonna say this to everybody. Like I cannot part or or say even if I consume the information, it doesn't go in trash. I've got a folder of Mark's wisdom to refer back to. So just enjoy you so much. Thanks for inviting me. Appreciate you, Stacey. Thanks so much.